wherever the Holy Spirit leads you, it's stirring. Uh, you don't create the stir, it's the love that's in you that creates it. <laughs> you don't endeavor to stir anything, it's the natural thing of the response of the earth to the grace and to the power of the kingdom in a man or woman that's submissive and will subject themselves and say, Lord, not my will, but thy will, submit ourselves. So when God has his way with you, it uh, moves upon all those about you. Now those that are of the kingdom, those that hear his voice and follow, they are happy, they are fed, they have a fellowship with you that they're starved, just like my brother here told me when I loved him, he said, I'm so hungry for Holy Spirit fellowship. See, his heart is starved. And if you're not in it, your heart gets starved in a little while. And if you're not in it, and you're out there at Springfield in a factory, and you go in there and you can't have it, your heart is starved. Our brother's heart is starved for Holy Spirit fellowship. He's been looking for it. He's been reading books. He's been reading about this service and that service and the Word of God of how to enter in and how to press into the kingdom of God and maintain the right compass and to get to the narrow path in the very center. And son John, you're starved for Holy Spirit fellowship if you don't have it for a while. If you're gone someplace on an assignment and you're not in the midst of it. And so that's what Charles said to me today. See, I miss him because we're very close. When we get together in a car and Jesus comes down and the glory falls, the tears begin to roll, his face shines, and he begins to eat at the table and drink in a fountain that never runs dry. And we get so happy and God comes down, puts his arms around us, lifts us up, and puts us on the lap of his care. And we look at each other and it seems like the shining of Jesus' light is all around within our hearts and we're in debt to him for the precious blood to cleanse us. Yes, sir. And so therefore he wants that we be faithful to be subject to these situations about us and that we be Christian in our reactions and our motives to be obedient. For if we fail to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, then we become a distance and we're not attentive, we're not sensitive to his guidance, so we, we form our own program. We get our own schedules going. We get settled back in our rocking chair. We get settled back in our rest. And these lovely things we have. You see, if you're not careful, we're going to miss heaven. See, if we settle back and we, you take us, if we have any bank account, if we have things that we can rest on, it's too easy for us to become lukewarm. Unless we press and pray and pray and pray and cry and pray, we're going to become lukewarm. If we have refrigerators and we have deep freezers and we've got something to eat and you've got this and you've got that, if you don't press with all your heart, you'll become cold and not even know it. And you'll think you're on the way. Oh, it's, it's tremendous. God wants us to be faithful to him, submissive and surrendered. So we will not miss it, miss his kingdom. It's easy for us to, to rest upon our oars and to take it easy and to think, well, here we have, yes, he's given us so much, but we must take care and we must be aware lest we become cool or cold or lukewarm and fail uh, the voice of Jesus, the leading of the Holy Spirit and not press into this every good work which God would assign us to, which the Holy Spirit would lead us in. The rich have received their consolation, Jesus said. The rich have received their consolation. So when we have riches in this world, we've got to press all the time or we're going to miss the kingdom of God. Jesus said, you warn those that have riches. He said, you warn them, you tell them. It's so easy for us to grow cold and look warm and get set in our ways and miss the kingdom of God. Well, it's easy. Yes, we have our bathrooms, we have our washers, we have all these conveniences. We're rich. We're rich. Carpets on the floor, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet. Oh, we've got to press or we're going to miss the kingdom. We must press much to obey Jesus, to obey the Holy Spirit. 
Oh, it's so easy to miss the leading of the Holy Spirit. See, I wanted certain things, but I don't go by that. But the flesh in me, in my mind, after walking with God these 40 some years, I want certain things, but I've got to be a, paying attention to what the Holy Spirit tells me. And do only what the Holy Spirit wants. And it's a continual obeying the Holy Spirit day after day. And if we fail to obey the Holy Spirit, then we have repercussion. We have an aftermath. And there's sufferings and there's trials and there's battles that we bring on ourselves. A lot of our battles and sufferings and heartaches is because of our disobedience. That's right. Because we haven't prayed and because we haven't obeyed God. Haven't really obeyed Him. Just in a form or just somewhat. He's looking for men that will truly, and women too, boys and girls, that will truly follow him. Actually follow him. Don't depend on someone else. Look to Jesus yourself and be faithful to him yourself. Don't depend on your husband or your wife or your child or your pastor. You walk with him yourself and you walk with him and don't let anything get in your way. Amen. And love everybody as you go. <laughs> that means love everybody, everyone, everywhere. Blessing your enemies daily. Amen. See, that's one thing that gets through every time. That's one prayer that gets through every time. Because Jesus said, bless your enemies. And every time you bless your enemies, that prayer goes just right through the heavens about as fast as you can think it. That's one that goes clear through fast, just like that. And when you walk with Jesus, you will be despised and hated, but you don't dwell on that. In fact, you don't even know who hates you. You're just so happy with everybody. You don't know who they are, and you're not trying to find out. You're just having a thrilling time with everybody. And if you were to meet an enemy, you couldn't tell. If there's two men there watching you, you couldn't tell which was your friend or your enemy because you'd have the time with both of them. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, hey, a prayer goes clear through right now. Submit yourselves. Subject yourselves. Be faithful. Be holy to every good work. And be faithful to God in Jesus Christ and one another. And love as he loves. Behold, the love of God set upon in our heart. I'll tell you, you love your enemy to death and you destroyed him forever. <laughs> and God wants it with love. But when you walk with him, you create a havoc. You create an uprising wherever you go because wherever Jesus is, people get under conviction. They don't want to do with it. You don't try to put them under conviction. You just praise the Lord and you go along and they'll say, well, what's going on here? Well, the Holy Spirit is working around where you are. You're careful what you say, and you're careful how you go, and how you move among men. But when you do, and you're going with Jesus, He's working through you. That is, if you're submissive and obedient, and faithful and childlike, when He's got a man like that, He can crack the heart of his shell one of these days. All you have to do is be faithful. It'll break open one of these times. It may take 20 years to get it open, but God will do it. And the man and woman that walks with God is not cracking shells. They're just loving everybody and just telling the good news and telling stories and praise God, set the captive free, hitting the brokenhearted. The, God does the cracking of the shells of this resistance. He wants us to be submissive. And subjected that we will be honoring one another. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now you're getting this as I'm getting it. And we know today that he loves you. <laughs> yes, sir. You're precious to him, every one of you. And I thank him. We said that the room after we arrived, I said only Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit could ever give him this session like he gave this morning. It was so precious and so wonderful, I thought, oh, Jesus, only, only the Heavenly Father could ever give another session so marvelous as he did this morning, for we hadn't anything. We only knew that we were to wait on him, trust him for his guidance and his blessing, his direction on what he did here today. He has the record. We praise him. All of you were here. If you can read what happened, if you can read what was going on, not just the things themselves, but if you could read the edge, if you could read the edges, if you were able to read them spiritually, 
uh, they will convince you that Jesus loves you. So we must be obedient and ready for every good work. To obey is better than sacrifice, hearkening than the fat of rams. To obey the Lord Jesus Christ, the voice of God, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. He said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And if we fail to obey him, then we lose the voice. We become insensitive. Because every disobedience places us into instantaneous spiritual deafness and blindness. Every disobedience, that is, every time we feel the leading of the Holy Spirit, we become spiritually deaf and blind, and we are not aware of what he's doing until we repent of it and ask God to forgive us of our disobedience, and then hearing returns and spiritual sight is possible. When we're disobedient and God forgives us, blots it out through the blood of Jesus, he may lead us in seconds, minutes, or ten years. God's ways are past finding out. And he wants a people that will actually obey him faithfully every day. It's been my great concern and burden since I was a pastor 42 years and over. Because we were endeavoring to present God's Word a few years before we went into the pastor over 42 years ago. My burden is that there's not very many people in any church that obeys God. This grieved Jesus very much when he was here. We are so in the flesh that we are not willing to be crucified to obey. For there must be an inner willingness of a crucifixion before obedience is the Spirit. There isn't any cross aside and apart from the life of obedience, and obedience is only by a cross, and that's inner denial to do not my will but his will be done. And when I fail to do his will, I become blind. So I'm going in circles, and I'm going over the same thing it is a monotony, and I get sleepy, sluggish. But if I'm obedient, then I see, and he brings me into beautiful places of his love and light and opportunities, and the yielding, and the bringing in of the lost. Praise the Lord. We could have a little cool air, it would be good, if you please. So the Holy Spirit is mighty, working to every heart that's ready to every good work. The Holy Spirit is seeking, God is seeking men that's willing to do exactly what Jesus said. He may say, go in and get your shoes shined to me. So he sent me in Fort Wayne, Indiana to get my shoes shined one day. And I went over here, the policeman said, the shoe shining parlor is over here. So I walked all the way over there and it was closed, it was out of business. So I made inquiry and he said, well, we're sure there's one at the Hotel Keenan. So I walked there and sure enough, there was. A precious brother, about 55 years of age, who was shining shoes. And so I sat down and he began to work on my shoes. And I began to tell him about how wonderful and how precious Jesus is, and how we need him. And he said, I want to tell you, I thought I was dying last night. So I thought I was dying. And I told him a way he called straight, so he just followed me right in there. <laughs> I, I told him about this wonderful way of salvation, that if we'll ask Jesus to forgive us, and he gave his heart to Jesus there, and he and I was the one end of that barber shop, and he was shining with shoes, and he met Jesus, and the men at the other end didn't know the joy we were having. But you see, the Holy Spirit sent me over there. He told me to go there. We were in Tulsa, and I said to son John, of course, when he came to us, he, before he was saved, he was uh, out in the world, and he didn't mind how I looked much, did you? No. no. And shining shoes just wasn't in his, what is the term? 
like to have anyone do anything for him. No, he didn't want anybody shining his shoes. He'd rather shine them himself, of course. Because he wanted, if there's any shining shoes, he wants to be the doer. He'll shine your shoes happy. Yeah, oh well, yeah, he's glad he and James to shine your shoes. But uh, the Lord told me to tell him to go in and get his shoes shined. I gave him the money and sent him in. <laughs> well, it wasn't easy for John to go in there. And <laughs> Mark, when you tell me to get my shoes shined, then you gave me the money, and on top of that was more difficult. You'd been standing there for some time. Oh, yes, yeah, some time outside. And when the Lord showed me that you need to get your shoes shined, you went in, you took the money, and they began to shine the shoes, and you found some fellow there and began to try to tell him of this wonderful way of how the Lord had helped you, and you became so happy. He sat down just about a minute after I was seated. Yeah. Began to share how Jesus had saved me and transformed my life. I forgot all about the shoe shine. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It seemed like we were just about sat down and it was all over because Jesus was so sweet. Yes. Yes. Got so happy, you know I gave the money to the wrong person. Yeah. 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 I became so happy I gave the money to the wrong gentleman. Because uh, I'd never known, see, I had no idea that Jesus was going to use me in a shoe shine seat. So you actually didn't go in there primarily for a shoe shine. Right. You went in to give light to a darkened soul to Jesus. No, yes, sir. You got your shoe shine. All right, but this dear one got to hear about love and care, and that's what, that's what was important. Yes, sir. So that's the way it is in the life of obedience. Uh, he has plans, and on our way, shining shoes, he wants to let his beautiful light shine through. How often his guidance is against the, uh, our own nature. Nearly always. The best uh, decision of our own patterns. Nearly always. Patterns. Nearly always. Nearly always or always. That the guidance, the leading of the Holy Spirit and the flesh, that's why there is a cross. That's why we have to enter, you know, enter death in order to submit ourselves to obedience and to say yes. Because it's so easy for us to miss what God has really ordered and wants to bring about. We were going to Oklahoma City and I said to Florence, and Dorothy, I said, I have to go to a grocery store before we can leave here. I had never been to that grocery store many times, maybe once, maybe never. But I went to the grocery store, and when I arrived, the groceryman had trouble with his eyes, and he, want, he was looking for me. He wanted me to come, and I went in and talked with him, and you know, Jesus helped me to pray for him in the grocery store, and Jesus touched his eye, and I was happy, and he was helped. See, I had to wait. So we wait on the Lord, but he wants us to obey him, do exactly what he says. And we must be submissive, to speak evil of no man, not to criticize or not to judge. Anything we speak that's not good has to fall in this category. If it isn't good, if it isn't edifying, helpful, if it isn't uh, bringing forth a beautiful light upon the dear ones, it's better not to say anything. Because if we do, we're going to bring ourselves into darkness. And we'll not be led by the Holy Spirit. Of only time, if, you, if we were to speak evil or critical of anyone, we're immediately in a place where it's hard to, to get God's word, get God's guidance. So we've got to repent of it before we can get back and get tuned in to get uh, the operator on the line. Yes, to speak evil of no man, to not criticize, to not find fault, to not judge. Because one evil time of judging or seeing something in a brother or sister that isn't just exactly what we think it ought to be, and we were to say it, then we grieve the Holy Spirit so that he cannot work through us until we repent of that. And he tells us to put them in mind about this. Dear ones, it, uh, you've heard me say before 
that my burden is that so many of us in the churches sometime during the day find fault with somebody. And God doesn't want this. We mustn't do it. But it's so in the nature of men and women that they, they do it and hardly know it. Unless they walk with God and pray and plead and die out, we will do it and not know. We won't know what's in our heart. That's what you were telling me, William, you know, as we talk. You know, it's in our heart. And before we know it's there, we've got to pray and plead to be delivered from this. The spirit of judging, the spirit of finding fault with our sister, our brother, our neighbor, our friend. Because this is a spirit within us. It's a spirit of the carnal nature, of the self-life. You see, the spiritual nature does not do this. The spirit that lives in a man or woman as they follow Jesus and are inwardly crucified, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, they do not do this. They are speaking about the wonderful things of the kingdom of God. They're speaking about answers to prayer and God's blessings and directions. They speak about his word, his love, and all these wonderful things involved in the walk with God. But unless we pray and obey and keep trusting, we will not be submissive, submissive to God's will. We'll not be ready for every good work. We'll be talking about someone and grieving the Lord. We must get this out of our hearts. It is urgent that we be cleansed of this uncleanness. It is urgent but I don't think people can hear it too well because the devil knows and hell knows that if you, few people hear this uh, hell is going to be depopulated there's not going to be so many people lost as would have been if they don't hear it I trust that we'll be able to get this over to our hearts and lives that we will some way learn that we must be cautious of our words it is so important to do this. <clears throat> this is the time that we take an account and remember the 14th chapter of Romans, verse 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Let us therefore now not judge one another anymore, he said. Not speak anything but good about our brothers and sisters. And this spirit will get into every individual that it possibly can. And unless we're cleansed and walk in the light, it's going to get in there. Unless we're cleansed and pray sufficiently and obey every leading, and keep up close to the Jesus and under the cross, that spirit's going to go right in there. Right along with rebellion or contention. So he says, speak evil of no man. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but say the good things, helpful things. Let the Lord, let the Holy Spirit work with all those about us. To speak evil of no man, to be no more brawlers, but gentle. Not contentious, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. It says to all men, gentleness, as gentleness to all of our fellows, to all of our sisters, to all those about us. But the gentle spirit comes by inner death. Other, other ways and words, it is instead of gentleness, there's briars and kind of a punchy feeling, kind of a stabbing feeling that's in men and women, unless they're all broken. Unless we're broken. Brokenness goes with gentleness. So as we're submissive and inwardly crucified and sanctified, abounding in him, then you see we will be gentle and compassionate. 
And gentleness and compassion never goes along about speaking evil of the brother. It goes along with tenderness and long-suffering and adoration and praise to God. So gentleness flows out, and meekness flows out of a spirit of brokenness, which is inner crucifixion. That is the life of consistent obedience. Doing only God's will. Compassion and gentleness are wonderful attributes of the Christian life. Everyone that's a Christian, that's a true Christian, if you get close to them, uh, in the ordinary way, they are very gentle people. They're very compassionate and, and uh, long-suffering. It doesn't mean that they, have to, that they get to the place where they don't have to die out to become that way. It's a continual death to be that way. It's a dying. Paul said, I die uh, out daily. He had to die day by day, hour by hour to himself, to the world, to the pressures of the flesh. And I have to do that too, all of us. So we are to submit ourselves. We are to walk with him. And unless we do this, we're going to be held accountable in the day of judgment, church people. Oh, it's going to be a dangerous thing. It's going to be awful. It's going to be terrible in the day of judgment. For people of the churches that has failed to walk in the light as he is in the light, it's going to be a serious indictment if we haven't been faithful and compassionate and gentle and sweet and filled with his love. And we cannot do this only as we follow Jesus in his spirit. So that his love flows through us to our brothers and our sisters. Oh, glory to God. Now this is an old, old, old message. But oh, we need, he said, put them in mind. He said, you tell them, put them in mind, he said. I charge you, put them in mind of these things. And it's a continue. Unless you review this, this will all be taken away from you in a matter of either seconds or minutes. He tells me minutes. In four minutes, what I've already said, the weakness of the flesh, the tiredness of your body, the comfort of your life, what you have, what you can rest upon, it'll be gone. Unless you are broken, unless you're living a consistent, obedient life and you love as he loves, and you're pressing into the kingdom, it'll just kind of ebb away. And we have to press to keep it. Strive to keep it. Because the enemy knows how to tease us out of this wonderful way. Because God's going to save a lot of people, many souls, if we're faithful to do this. Be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. He said, put them in mind about this. Yes, yeah, so we are to be ready to every good work. We are to obey. Not going by our feelings or what we like, but, but His Spirit working in us. His Spirit works only in the obedient heart. See, He's constantly trying to get into every man and woman. But unless He can, He has to do the best that He can, and that's working through those who will be attentive, submissive. And sometimes God works through people that aren't church people to bring other things to pass. And they don't know he is. But he is. He's working through them to bring certain things to pass. Oh, wouldn't it be marvelous if I could so spur us on to the life of obedience? I mean, consistent obedience? Letting God have his way so this inner life be crucified and God have the first place in you and me. Oh, that's what he wants. In fact, that's what God wants us to learn about here. That's one of the main things that he would have us to learn about is to learn to obey. To learn to obey. And that comes by obedience, it comes by death, it comes by prayer, by faith and trusting. By the Holy Spirit. It comes by His Spirit, not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. 
Well, it's God's will that... He tells me now he's leading, guiding, directing me. It's God's will that in every church service, he wants to direct us. He wants to lead. And if laymen would be obedient, the pastors would seldom preach in a pulpit. There'd be days or weeks before they'd have to preach if everyone obeyed the Holy Spirit because God would be working through farmers and engineers and tool makers and school teachers and uh, street sweepers. All types of persons. God would be working through them if they would obey. If they would obey. He can work through people you never dreamed how God can work. If we're obedient. William was telling me about just going and he got out. He says, I didn't really try to get any particular tapes of the waitings upon God or sermons. But he said, I hear I was going to Europe. So I just went in at a random. He got some and he put one on. Put a tape on. And he began to hear it, and the Lord stirred him a bit, really helped him, lifted him, encouraged him. And so he decided one night to put it on. I think they were near Washington, D.C. in a hotel. Sure. Right. And he had a friend with him, very precious brother, James Williams. Jim Williams, right. And he was trying to get to sleep and couldn't. So he's with, about, he's just about he just about fallen asleep. Just almost fallen asleep. So William put the tape on and began. The tape started, and you may tell something now. And it was the uh, waiting upon God, I believe, in '76 when Michael Bauer sang, uh, "Be still, my soul." Yes. The Lord is on thy side. Yes. And after you got done, um, after they got done singing, uh, you began to weep. I began to cry. And weep, and weep, and weep. And weep. Oh, yes, and weep, and weep. I mean, oh. I've never seen you weep that way. Quite like that. And he said, well, if we see what I, we've been through, you see. Now, I thought that uh, the weeping would turn Jim off. Uh, Jim's a, a big fella. Yeah. He's bigger than anyone in this room. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's, uh, he's not a... Um, well, he's big and he's uh, been sort of a tough fellow, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. Very, sure. very sure. tough. Oh, yeah. You know, he's a man that is over people and uh, can, before he was converted would, would uh, rake them over the coals until they would get physically ill, have to go out, and sometimes they'd actually vomit. They'd be so ill after he'd get through it with them. And he'd pull them back in the office and chew them out some more. Yes. Now, a man like that, you know, it's, that's something. Yes. And I didn't know what he'd do. I thought, uh oh, this, my, in my head, see, I thought, uh oh, I sure hope he's asleep. <laughs> this will turn him off. And when he heard the weeping, it turned him on. Woke him right up. Oh. Came right, right up out of the bed. Oh, come out of there. I tell you, this big man came out of there. It was all stirred up. He says, turn that up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he said, this is wonderful. Just oh, he said, this is precious. Isn't that marvelous? Got all stirred up. We got into Poland in a few days, and uh, we were in our hotel. Isn't it marvelous? Before you get to Poland, I want to tell them something where they were. Yeah. You see, while God had that tape on, and the Holy Ghost was working through the cry, because of God's Spirit working in us, the Holy Ghost gave me a vision and an inspiration and some things within. And here I was weeping and crying. Uh, and that waiting upon God, was that in 76 or 77? 70, was it 76? Yes, we came back and put in the condominium. Oh, I see. Well, that's been about three years ago. Yeah. Right? We see the cry that was in the Holy Spirit in that leading, because God said for that song to be sung, then the Holy Ghost came in this inner cry. And the cry, you see, got a hold of this man, and when he gets to Poland, what happened? You see, the meeting here... When that took place, wasn't over, because it jumped right over into Washington, D.C., and then over into Poland. See, what is in the Holy Ghost? If you will be God, if you mind God. Now, the Lord said that they were to sing a certain song, and when they sang that, that's when the cry started. See, the power of God began 
see the Holy Ghost through obedience, through his guidance, through his direction, the cry, through the leading, you see, and, and that cry here went over into Washington, D.C., because you reached for it in Michigan and carried it over there by plane, put it on a recorder, and it started, and it wakened him up. Yeah, in more ways than one. <laughs> and when he got to Poland, what did he say? He said, uh, put that tape on again of the weeping. Put that on. I want to hear that again. Think of this. Said, this is what, that's what helps me. See, now this is tremendous because what God cried through servants then, in the meeting back two to three years ago, you see, sprang out in that hour in Washington, D.C. and then went over into Poland and was again there. That was what he heard was the cry. It wasn't talking. It was what he heard in his heart and the soul of crying. Not a word was said. You just wept. You see, he probably was weeping because of what had been saying. If we could only get the layman, and if we could only see through and get all of us to obey and really get the vision and do many things that God wants us to do. And when he came back from Poland, well, Reverend McPhail told him, he said, the way God's dealing with you, you may have to preach. Right, I said, you may have to preach. He probably looked at William. Uh, he had looked at me and um, <laughs> sort of smiled like, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the story. Yeah, that's, just, that's something, isn't it? But, come along a few weeks, a few days, or weeks, whatever it is, and he comes to the pastor, uh, McPhail, and he said, say, God's given me a message. <laughs> you see, if we could only get obedience going, you see how it would be a springboard to others on and on and on. If everybody, if we could just get a handful in a church to obey, if we could, if we were able, if we were able to get just a handful of people in a church to obey God, oh, oh people, can you get the vision? Are you sure you know how important it is, really? If we could only get people to obey. You see, if we don't obey, you see, the Holy Spirit can't work through us. We've got to have obedience. God works through those that obey Him. He wants to work through us. But my burden is, so few could even hear it, I could tell now that you can't hear it. See, I can tell. There's only a few of us that can hear this in their heart. Now it touches me now. There's only a few of us that are getting this in their heart. Right here, a thousand people, some of the finest people in the world, but hardly any can hear it in their heart. They can hear here, but not here, not right there. See, now, you some buddy says, help me go to here, get dead enough, broken, crucifixion, under the cross, obeying, submissive. That's the way it gets in there. It's through the Holy Spirit working in us in inner death. Please turn tape to the other side. Thank you.